Hello, my name is Ilya Feinberg, and welcome to the Finecraft. Do you know how when you build the power app, you need to pick a specific screen size, like a tablet or a phone? And what do you even do if you want to build a desktop app? What if you want to build one app that does it all? Tablets, phones, desktops, whatever. This concept is known as responsive UX, meaning that you build one app which changes its experience based on the device used. But before I go deep into that topic, I want to make a few things clear. When I'm saying responsive UX or responsive design, I don't mean that you take a table or a button and just stretch it to fill the screen and then that's responsive. It's not. It's just a stretchy design. <laughs> and yes, that's fine if you want to build a design for a small phone or a big phone, that's okay. But if you want to build a design that works well on a phone and a tablet, well, then you need something else. The point I'm trying to make is that each device requires its own unique experience. Not just the buttons or tables becoming bigger or smaller, but the entire layout, the available functionality, and even how data is presented would be different on different devices. And now that we're on the same page in terms of how it needs to work, I want to show you Truly Responsive, a framework I've built to create truly responsive Canvas apps. Let's take a look at this demo app, which comes packaged with the Truly Responsive framework. The app demonstrates the implementation of an order fulfillment system with four different interfaces. This one is made for desktops, for office employees that manage orders and track their execution. You have your orders, charts, and tasks. At the top, we see that we have menu items and the search bar. As you can see, this interface was made specifically to be used with a keyboard and mouse. The UI elements are fairly small and they are reminiscent of a normal desktop application. Actually, if you ever use Dynamics, then this interface will look quite familiar. Let's see what happens when we make this window smaller, emulating a tablet in landscape mode. So we see that the chart has changed and the data in the table is shown differently. The size of the text became a bit bigger. The menu is now touch oriented and it is located at the bottom of the screen. Even buttons here on the charts are different. This experience is now more consistent with usage on a tablet. Now it is also more tuned to the role of a warehouse employee which will work with a tablet. Okay, so that simulates a tablet in landscape mode. Let's go to portrait mode. Now we have basically the same interface but without the chart on the side. And now let's go to the final stage and make it font sized. Now I think we see the most drastic change. We still have the navigation here at the bottom, but it is smaller to account for the smaller screen width. The data is also presented entirely differently. It is presented in such a way that makes it easy to interact with on a small device on the go and provides the information that you actually need. So in this case, it demonstrates how someone working on deliveries in the field will actually be using the app. The information you need on the go is where to deliver, to whom to deliver, their phone number, and what you're delivering. And really, that's it. You really don't need much more than that. All right, that's good and all, but the question is, how do you build something like that? I'm glad you asked. So, as I said initially, the premise of the idea is that every device type has its own experience. And the way it's implemented here is that every device type has its own screen. You have a screen for desktops, you have a screen for landscape tablets, you have a screen for portrait tablets, and you have a screen for phones. The switching logic is done by a new component that I have built, which is called the Watcher. Very dramatic. The reason why the first screen is blank is because this is where the Watcher is placed. On application start, it decides where to route the user based on device type. If you open the tree, we can see that it is right here. Let's check out the properties. Debug mode shows the current window size and the device type detected by the Watcher. The switching thresholds are taken from a global app property called size breakpoints. If you adjust them, you will see that the watcher adjusts as well. It's worth noting that by default, Canvas apps would only have here three numbers. You will need to add the fourth number manually if you also want to add support for desktop apps. Typically, the watcher will monitor the size of the app continuously, but you can disable that by enabling fixed screen mode. Let's say you build an app with UX for phone portrait mode or tablet portrait mode. After the initial load, you don't need to change the app size anymore. 
In this case, you will use the fixed screen mode. Let's look at the rest of the properties. We have four references corresponding to each device type. The watcher will redirect the user to any screen that you define here. An important point to consider here is that for apps with a variable screen size or orientation, you need to place the watcher on every screen so the user can be redirected from any screen. Let's take a look at this test screen to see the watcher's debug mode. You see that as I change the window size, the watcher reports app size and selects the appropriate device type. If I were to define screen references here, it would immediately redirect me to the selected screen. Last few things to know about the watcher. When you create a new app, select the tablet app. Don't worry, it will also work on phones. And in settings, you need to disable scale to fit because we are handling scaling ourselves. So that's it. That's how you build apps with the watcher. Build out the UX for each target device type and let it worry about redirecting users to the right experience. And by the way, your devices don't have to be limited to phones, tablets or desktops. I'm aware of at least one project where the watcher is being used to create a TV app. So there's certainly place for creativity. Links to the truly responsive framework are in the description below. If you have questions or just want to show off the apps that you made, leave a comment or you can always find me on LinkedIn. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a lovely day.